Okay, so welcome. So today we're going to be looking at guys uh, the top things that you really need if you are to set up a home studio, and then we're also going to talk about door and what a door is and why we use it and what its purpose is really. So the first thing you're going to need if you're going to have a home studio, probably the obvious thing to say is a computer. So that could be a Windows, it could be a Mac. It doesn't really have to be anything or specific. It could it literally can be either. The one thing to bear in mind is if you have a MacBook, you will be able to run certain software on there that you can't on a Windows. For example, what I've got loaded up on the screen at the moment is a Logic profile. Logic is exclusive to Mac P, uh, Mac computers, so you wouldn't be able to get that. But all the other uh, software that you would need um, in the respect of doors, which we'll get to again in a minute, most of them are available on both platforms. It's really a personal preference as to whether you want a Mac or a Windows computer for that. So that's the first thing you need. The second thing you will need is what is something called an audio interface. So for example, if I if I was to play an instrument and I plugged it straight into the computer, what would happen is you'd get something called latency. Now latency effectively means that when you play a chord, so say I played a D chord on the guitar or something like that, basically it would then come in about a few seconds afterwards. So I'd play the chord, as I'm playing and it goes into the um, computer, there will be a delay. So latency effectively means there's a bit of a delay. So if you're trying to record something in time over a track, then you will get latency, which makes it almost impossible to actually record in time. So you need an audio interface. Focusrite, a very popular brand with this. Um, with this as well on the picture example that you can see on your screen, um, you should have an arrow now pointing to uh, the first channel. The first channel is where you would plug in your microphone, so you can plug it in. Um, it's an XLR cable. You plug that in there, and basically that sends that signal into the software that is on your computer. The second one, which will now be brought up by an arrow, is more for your instrument. So you've got two channels on this focus, right? The first one's for your microphone, so you know, singing or recording something live using a microphone, such as drums, or to be fair, it could be a guitar, um, anything. Whereas the second one is a direct import, as in you can plug your cable straight into that slot, and basically you go straight through into your computer and play your guitar. Most commonly you find with people when they use a home studio, they will use that for guitars, basses, um, probably pianos and things like that and then they'll add effects later on to replicate the sound that they are actually after. So we've got a computer, we've got audio interface. On the picture as well you will see there is a microphone which I'm pointing to you now using an arrow again. Now the microphone is a very important tool. Obviously most people have a home studio. For most people they tend they will need at some point to use vocals. Okay so obviously a microphone is really key for that because it picks up all your dynamic range, or your frequencies, etc, etc, for your voice. Some people also use microphones, um, as there are varied, uh, varied microphones, which we'll cover on another video, that pick up different instruments better than others. But the overall idea is if you have a microphone, you can effectively record pretty much most things. Okay. Then, also on the screen, another massive important thing is the big headphones that are also now being pointed out. The headphones most people in the modern day listen to music through headphones. You see it all the time if you get on the bus, um, if you're walking in the street, you'll see people with headphones. So most people, I think now on average, they say that most people consume music through headphones. So it's important that we have headphones when we listen to music because that's what, if you create music, people are actually going to listen to the music through. Yes, um, you will. Uh, another thing you'll want is speakers. So you can have also speakers to the left and right of your uh, MacBook, Windows, PC, whatever it might be. But for a lot of people, a lot of producers, they like to use headphones because as I said, most people consume music now through the use of headphones, okay? And then the final thing that we're gonna be talking about today is the DAW. Now DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation. So DAW, D-A-W stands for Digital Audio Workstation. Now there are numerous doors out there okay we've got FL Studio, Logic Pro, Ableton Live, Pro Tools, okay, Cubase etc the list goes on and on and on and on now a lot of people have said to me in the past which um, which software do you think is the best I'll be honest I own about oh, well, I use Cubase at work 
I have Logic Pro, I have Ableton, I have FL Studio, and I used to own Pro Tools. For me, they all they all do pretty much the same job. The only thing I would say is if you are looking to be an electronic um, performer with your music, so say you're creating electronic music and you wish to perform that music live using different um, instruments or using different technology, I would probably go more down the road of Ableton. I know FL Studio have started to add um, to that and doing a live performance set. However, um, again, for me, I think Ableton, they, they kind of started the craze. Again, there'll be another video at some point that looks into that um, where we'll look at Ableton, how it works, in performance, etc., etc. Okay, so those are the five things. You need a computer, MacBook or Pro, audio interface, okay, which you plug in your instruments in and your microphones. Then you need your microphone, okay, headphones or speakers. Like I say, headphones is what we consume mainly through now. And then obviously the final thing is the door. So, in front of you on this screen is my door that I'm currently got with this with this song in my project, okay? So this is Logic Pro X. So if I click File up here and go on New, okay, we are going to load up Logic Pro. So when you open up a door, this is kind of the thing that you will see, okay? So you've got, well, so if I select Create Audio Track, you will see now that an audio track has come up here where it says Audio 1, okay? Basically, if I had an audio interface currently plugged in, as I record, basically it would come in this section here. So it would fill up in that little section there. Now, if I wanted to add more tracks, nice and simply, I just got a new track. Can again, I can add a new audio track, etc., etc. And then you get more than one track. So, in this lesson, we've talked a lot about producers. Okay, for those of you that are just watching this on YouTube, by lesson I mean while I'm teaching currently in my class. But we're looking at producers. Now, the most important tool, really, to a producer, okay, is your mixer. So I've just clicked here, and it's brought up this big screen at the bottom, which is our mixer, okay, which I've just highlighted. The first track that I loaded in is currently here, okay? So it's audio one. The second track I loaded in was audio two. Now, what you would tend to do is you would have a track for each instrument. So for example, if I double click audio one, I might say, do you know what, this is gonna be my bass guitar. And I'll double click that in there. Again, audio two, I might say, do you know what, this is gonna be my piano. Now, what would happen here is I would have two separate channels for two separate instruments. So if I thought, oh, the bass is too loud or the piano is too loud, I can alter that parameter here. Now, if I show you this dial, that controls our volume. So if you raise it, obviously it gets louder. If you lower it, it obviously gets quieter. Now for most producers and most songs, there are a lot of instruments actually in a mix that we don't always hear. Because what they'll do is they'll lower it to about here, say minus 12, something like that. Maybe even less than that. It could go all the way down to 20, whatever it might be. And it will just vaguely be in the song, but it's still important because it actually adds to the whole atmosphere, the whole vibe of that track. So there are your two tracks and your mixer, okay? Then what happens is both of these will go into our stereo out. So as we've said before, most music is on one file. It tends to be MP3 or WAV file, most commonly MP3. Basically an MP3 file takes every single track that we have got, okay? And basically puts them into one so that they are mixed together. Now, it's a very difficult skill and it's a really big art form to be able to do that and do it very well. Because what you'll find is when you bounce a track, as it's called, where you put it all together. So if you click bounce, for example, it comes up and it says bounce it as a WAV or an MP3. That is basically the process of putting all those tracks in together. If all of your tracks were raised to the highest volume, you are going to miss out on something. Okay, so it's about getting the balance between the levels on your individual tracks to get the overall sound. Okay, so just to recap that, okay, you've got your in, uh, separate channels, you've got bass and piano, for example, here, those, those instruments will be recorded in there. Then when you bounce them, okay, they go into the stereo, which I've just currently highlighted, and then that basically is your final MP3 where all the channels have been mixed together. So what I want to show you is an example in practice, okay? So if I load up 
my previous work, which hopefully is behind, which it is. Okay, this is a song that I created uh, whilst I was at university. It's called Moonlight. It's effectively a synth kind of sounding um, soundtrack song. Okay, the link for this, by the way, if you want to hear the actual song, is underneath the um, video here on YouTube. So the YouTube video is called um, Getting Start uh, Home Studio and, um, and Door, basically. Um, under my YouTube channel, which is Nathan Hart, composer, drummer, um, etc. Basically, um, so the link will be underneath. Basically, this is the, this is effectively what the song sounds like. So notice there's a lot more channels this time. So if I just highlight this, these channels, in this section of music alone, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different instruments playing at the same time. Okay? So they, when they are played, all come out two speakers in one setting. So let's load up the mixer. Okay, so here are the ones that I've highlighted. You can see them here on the mixer. Okay? So, at the moment, none of these have actually been turned down. They're all at zero, okay, which is quite nice. A lot of these have been input by MIDI, though, which also dictates that. So, <clears throat> where I might have changed the volume might actually be within the actual file. Again, we'll look at MIDI and things like that in the future. But if I wanted to change something, so let's solo the piano. Oh, I'm soloing all of them. So, I want to solo the piano. If I lower it, now it's just all together. And now I'm going to slowly raise the volume. Really, now that it's on six, the piano is probably too loud. And you'll see that in the bounce here, I'm actually clipping a bit more now that I've raised it so high. So let's just lower that back down to where it was. And now it's more balanced. So that's effectively what a door, uh, what effectively a door looks like. So you'll have a mixer in it, which is important to all producers. Yeah, so our mixer, as I've said, is where we change the volume. Uh, we can add effects in there, which again, I'll cover in a different video, okay, which, which change the sound. But the main thing you need to take away from this video is that effectively, for a home studio, you need a computer, an audio interface, microphone, headphones, and a door. Door being our digital audio workstation, which is basically what this is in front of you. Yeah, so when you bring when you put a audio file in, it will be loaded in this section, okay, where I'm dragging now, and then effectively they get played all together. You get a mixing desk below, okay, and then when you play them, basically they all go into the bounce. The one thing I'm going to mention before we finish, you'll notice that there are green volume lines when all these tracks are played. So those green lines, again, are how loud it is. You've got to remember that if your volumes are all at the top, then this bounce section here is going to completely go into overdrive. Okay? There are dynamic ranges. Again, we'll cover that in the future. But the main thing, like I say, to take from today is effectively what a digital audio workstation is and the equipment you would need to actually get started in home production. Uh, before I wrap up, I also would like to say Regardless whether you are in a small studio, a home studio, or a massive studio that you see in films and also you see big bands using, 
they all have doors. So thank you very much, guys. Hope that was helpful, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.